Hi, Meredith Nicholson family. My name is Evan Hawkins, and I'm a member of the Indianapolis Public School Board. I will be reading chapter 15 of Fenway. I stare at the glove, at the fat glove for a second or two. I can't believe I've finally come face to face with it. Prepare for certain doom, you no good glove. You are the cause of all trouble. Snarling, I bare my teeth. I take a running leap, I pounce. Clenching it tightly in my jaws, I whip my head from side to side. The glove is stiffer and heavier than, heavier than I thought and way more leathery. I let it drop to the porch floor, time for the real work. I creep slowly around the perimeter of the glove, my gaze firmly upon its smooth face. Its weakness is here somewhere and I will find it. Aha, I spot a bit of string like a leathery shoelace. It's the perfect place to begin. And as I examine the glove more closely, I see more of them, lots more, probably millions. Could this be the easiest job ever? I chomp down on the nearest bit of string. I tug and I tug with all my might. It will not relent, but the string is not budging. I have to stop and rest, panting like a weakling until I spot a more vulnerable looking piece right next to it. I'll get you, you other piece of string. My teeth have been preparing a lifetime for this situation. Chomp, I pull, I pull, my jaws are tired, but they will not give up. I steady the glove with my front paws and dig my weight into my back, into my hind legs. I tug my head back and back and back. For a long, long time, I keep at it. Now and then, I hear the ladies' voice next door muttering to each other, what's going on over there? But there's no time for socializing. Nothing will distract me from my goal. After more and more biting and pulling, I hear an encouraging ripping noise. Progress. With each tug, the string rips a little bit more. I pull and I pull and I pull. At last, a bit of the end breaks off. I spit it onto the porch, panting and drooling. I glare at the glove, inspecting the damage. Other than a few teeth marks, marks, it looks exactly the same as before. One thing is clear, there's a lot more work to do. Luckily, there's a million, there are millions of strings left. I'm biting and chomping and chewing till my jaws are aching. I spit out more and more pieces. Others are fraying and tearing. They are no match for a determined dog like me. I'm exhausted, but I have important work to do. I have to finish the job. I must. Eventually my tongue was slobbering, my lungs are panting, my sides are heavy, and I stand back to admire what's left of the glove. Most of the strings are ripped or gone. The fat leathery part is full of holes and tears. There's no doubt about it. This glove has been sufficiently attacked. I sink down onto the porch. All I want is a well-earned nap in the sun. But for some reason, the ladies chose or choose that exact moment for conversation. Fenway, Patches calls, sounding concerned. Is everything all right? Somehow I find the energy to trot over to the fence. Everything was Everything's way better than all right, I say, thrusting out my chest. Actually, everything is perfect. Goldie snorts. Really? Hattie won't be playing with the glove anymore, and she probably won't be climbing the giant tree either. She's going to be my Hattie again, just like always, thanks to me. You sound pretty sure, Goldie says. How can a dog change a short human? Maybe you've never tried, I say, or maybe you didn't have the right plan. Oh, and you do? I don't want to brag or anything, but let's say I'm not afraid of hard work. Goldie gruffs. Are you calling us lazy? Hey, I'm not judging you. It's just that we'd hate to see you get your hopes dashed, Patches says. Not that we know anything about that, Goldie says. The fact that you lost your angel and couldn't get her back has nothing to do with me and my Hattie, I say. It's like comparing balls and frisbees. Fenway, Patches says, hesitating like she's not sure she could continue. We've been trying to dedicate, 
We, we're trying to be delicate. We've been trying to understand, be understanding and supportive, but it's time for you to own up to your truth, to, to the truth. Nothing can bring a short human back. Maybe you don't want to admit that you failed with your angel, I say, and you're jealous that I'm going to get my Hattie back. Now wait just a minute there, little guy, Goldie says with a snarl. We are not jealous. We're only trying to help, Patches adds. Why don't you save your help, helpfulness for somebody who needs it, I shout. My Hattie's coming back to me. Everything will be the way it's supposed to be. Just wait and see. Hmm, Goldie says. The sliding door thuds. We all turn. Hattie, an angel. Looks like we're about to get that chance, Patches says. Watch and learn, I say to the ladies. I rush up the steps. The short humans scamper onto the porch wearing caps with tails of, of hair swinging from the back. Angel has a fat leathery glove in one hand. Hooray, hooray, it's playtime, I bark, jumping and leaping at Hattie's legs. I'm so glad you're back. I missed you so much. But instead of reaching down and petting me, Hattie stands up tall. She gives Angel a quick glance, then looks at me. Sit, she says in a, com in a commanding voice as I, as I paw her shins. She points to the floor. She's, she's trying to tell me something, but what? Are there treats on the floor? How could I possibly have missed them? I circle around and around, busily sniffing the area around Hattie's feet. I find, I must find those treats. Um, okay, I hear Angel say. I keep on sniffing, but I do not smell any treats. What's going on? All I smell are those leathery bits from the glove. Apparently, Hattie notices them too. What? She cries, hurrying to the corner of the, of, the pat, of the porch and grabbing the glove. She turns it over, examining the destruction. Angel joins her. She leans in, her hands on her hips. Hattie's whole body sags. Clearly, the glove has let her down. It worked. My tail goes nuts. Hattie won't want to play with the glove anymore. Now we can play chase. Come on, Hattie, I bark, bounding down the porch steps. Try to catch me. I start running through the grass. Sure enough, she's hot on my, on my tail. Angel too. I knew it was the best idea ever, but I have to admit it, it's working even better than I thought. Fenway, Hattie yells. Around and around we go, zigging and zagging, all through the dog park. My ears blow straight back. My fur ripples in the breeze. My tongue lulls to one side. I sure hope the ladies are watching. I hate to say I told them so. Fenway! Hattie screams even louder, pretending to be mad and growly. She loves playing chase as much as I do. It's our favorite game. I'm racing around the giant tree when I hear Angel coming at me from the other way. Ha, does she think I'm an amateur? I instantly twist in reverse directions. But when I come out, when I come out of the other side, there's Hattie and Angel still behind me. They've got me concerned. It's important to win, but there are worse things than being nabbed by my Hattie. And besides that, I'm officially trapped. As she scoops me into her arms, I go to lick her cheek. She makes a sour face and she smells mad, super mad. I hope you enjoyed listening to chapter 15. I certainly enjoyed reading it. And thank you for making me an honorary member of School 96. Go, go, gophers!